December 1941. The United States was twisted in a second world war. The U.S. was unexpectedly attacked by the German allied country, Japan. The Japanese naval fleet bombed and destroyed a large part of the U.S.'s naval fleet in Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December, 1941. Neutral America now became an ally of Britain and Russia. America was recovering from the Great Depression. Entering in a war was not a plan of the U.S. government, but now there was no choice. Young men and women rallied together to support the war effort. People became less wasteful and put every ounce of effort into the support of their homeland. Propaganda began to fly. Every street corner had posters promoting volunteering for the army or the buying liberty bonds to support the war effort. Herbert McBay was an average young man from the Massachusetts town of Medford. In 1944, he joined the war effort. He went to boot camp and just like a lot of young men, then sent straight into the war. With America and its allies needing as much assistance as possible, young men were getting shipped across the pond or to the Pacific in boatloads. Herbert McBay was trained as a radio gunner for a B-24 Liberator bomber. In his time served, he reached the rank of task sergeant. As a member of the U.S. Army Air Force, Herbert McBay was added to the 718th Bomber Group. Task Sergeant McBay was shipped across country and across the Pacific Ocean to the front lines of the battle against the foreign enemy with tactics these young men will never have faced before. He and his crew were shipped into the Pacific on enormous people carriers. These huge ships beached and unloaded its cargo of vehicles, supplies, and men, including Herbert and his flight crew. Over the coming months, Herbert became like brothers with his fellow soldiers. Making the best of being away from family and friends, Sergeant McBay took pictures and wrote letters to his family. Soldiers used the wings of their aircraft to stay out of the hot Pacific sun, trying to recreate the comforts of home. McBay photographed amazing things in the time he served. Captured aircraft the U.S. confiscated during the war. Captured Japanese soldiers after the bombing of Manila in the New Guinea area. He visited native schools and photographed many of the civil people he saw. During our bombing raid today, one of our planes in our formation flew too low and was hit by a friendly bomb in its own raid. The plane started to fall after the bomb hit its wing. The plane flew into the target and the men gave their lives and made the mission a success. Upon the impact, the plane exploded. Those men were great soldiers and good friends and they will be missed. Even in the air, Sergeant McBay captured amazing photos of the bombing raids over Manila. Many of the explosives that left the plane had messages on them for their targets. The humor of the messages in the paintings that personalized each aircraft reminded us that these men fighting for our country were barely in their 20s, still inexperienced in life. They used their humor to help them through dire situations. Dear friends and family, Today we were told we were leaving the Pacific. We're being moved to an allied controlled part of Italy. Our next target, Orbitello. If we can render Orbitello useless, it will be a large stepping stone in the war effort. We can see that through the chaos, disarray, and confusion of war, these men weren't hardened killers. They were boys, young men with parents, sisters, brothers, and friends. In a routine bomb of the area over Orbitello, McBay's squad encountered enemy anti-aircraft fire when approaching the target. At 1.35 p.m., Herbert's aircraft suffered extreme damage from the anti-aircraft fire. The plane was too damaged to fly and left formation. Accounts from captured German intel states that five parachutes were seen exiting the aircraft. The info also stated that McBay survived the wreckage and attempted to escape with his life. Sadly, Herbert McBay was captured and killed near his intended target by enemy soldiers. Now there's a headstone in Florence that represents his contribution to his country. This is the story of just one of the millions of soldiers who gave his life for our country.